Development of an embryo is a most fascinating event in life. How a single fertilized egg cell gives rise to a marvelously organized newborn is an exciting but complex process. Some of the principles governing the way embryonic bodies grow are the same since millions of years. The research group of Jacqueline Deschamps wants to understand how embryonic development is controlled. Invertebrates, including us, the head is formed first and the rest of the body is added later, little by little. It is this construction of the embry embryonic body that we want to understand, how tissues are formed and get their appropriate shape. The Hox genes play a very important role in this process. They are responsible for the basic structure of an organism. Uh, Hox genes and vertebrates have four of them, four groups of them, uh, are activated one by one in the tip of the embryo where from tissue, new tissue emerge and where uh, embryos, uh, the, the body axis elongates. So the, these Hox genes function as a sort of molecular clock, making sure that the tissues are patterned uh, as they are emerging from the tip of the embryo. The Hox genes uh, work in close collaboration with the other control genes, among which their cousins called CDX. So Hox and CDX genes are responsible for patterning the body. We study these processes in the mouse embryo because mouse and human develop very similarly and they also have a very similar genome. So the mouse and these mouse embryos are a good model in which to study uh, human embryonic development and how this embryonic development can go wrong. Uh, our research also focuses on cells uh, at the tip of the embryo where from the axis elongates and where Hox and CD genes are working to control axial growth. Work of others has highlighted the existence of stem cells in this tip of the embryo that are responsible for axial growth. And we try to understand how Hox and CDX genes influence these stem cells. Uh, here I'm investigating the role of CDX genes on the uh, stem cells in the axis. Uh, on the left you see a regular embryo uh, with a normal uh, body axis. And on the right you see a mouse embryo uh, missing CDX genes and uh, with a shorter body axis. And if we look to the, the pelvic regions in the trunk, uh, you see that the vertebrae are widely opened and that is a reminiscent to uh, congenital syndromes in humans. So embryos that miss the CDX genes only generate a head. We believe that mouse embryos that miss their CDX genes cannot keep their stem cells alive at their tip and therefore cannot complete their body. Although our research, our research studies are fundamental, uh, they should be useful in understanding more about stem cells and their surrounding, an issue that is very important in the clinic. On the picture you see a mouse embryo. In the green at the posterior you can see the area where CDX and Hox genes are expressed. These genes also play a role in this uh, posterior part of the embryo and this is the same area which contains stem cells which make tissues uh, that uh, make the whole posterior part of the embryo, the whole body. The work of other laboratories in other countries is addressing other aspects of these processes in mice and in other animals. This way, investigators around the world are trying to put together all the pieces to understand how embryos develop.